Today I will be talking about Adina Septor agonist and sympathomimetic drugs. Adrenal receptor agonist and sympathomimetic drugs. The sympathetic nervous system is an important regula regulator of virtually all organ systems. This is particularly evident in regulation of blood pressure. This ult the ultimate effects of sympathetic stimulation are mediated by release of norepinephrine from nerve terminals, which then activates adrenal receptors on postsynaptic sites. Drugs that mimic the action of epinephrine or norepinephrine have traditionally been termed sympathomimetic drugs. The sympathomimetics can be grouped by mode of action and by spectrum of receptors that they activate. Some of these drugs are direct agonists, that is, they directly interact with and activate with adrenal receptors. So others are indirect agonists because their actions are dependent on their ability to enhance the actions of endogenous catecholamines. So for the molecular pharmacology underlying the actions of sympathomimetic drugs, so the effects of catecholamines are mediated by cell surface receptors. Adrenal receptors are typical G protein coupled with receptors. So the receptor protein has an extracellular and terminus traverses. The membrane seven times forming three extracellular and three intercellular loops and has an intracellular C terminus. So for the receptor types, there is an alpha receptor, a beta receptor, and a dopamine receptor. So alpha receptors are coupled with via G proteins in the GQ family to phospholipase C. This enzyme hydrolyzes polyphosphonocytes Tides leading to formation of inositol and diaglycerol. So for beta receptors, activation of all three beta receptors results in stimulation of adenylyl cyclase and increased conversion of ad adenosine triphosphate to camp activation of the cyclase enzyme is mediated by the stimulator stimulatory proteins. So for dopamine receptors, the D1 receptor is typically associated with the stimulation of adenylyl cyclase. For, e for example, D1 receptor included smooth muscle relaxation is presumably due to camp accumulation in the smooth muscle of those vascular beds in which dopamine dopamine is a vasodilator so for the receptor selectivity many clinically available other adrenergic agonists have selectivity for the major adrenoceptor types but not for the subtypes of these major subgroups so selectivity means that a drug may preferentially bind to a one subgroup of receptors at concentrations too low to interact extensively with another subgroup. However, selectivity is not usually absolute. Nearly absolute has been termed specificity. At higher concentrations, a drug may also interact with classes of receptors. So for receptor regulation, responses mediated by adrenoceptors are not fixed or static. The number and function of adrenoceptors on the cell surface and their responses may be regulated by catecholamines themselves. Other hormones and drugs age and a number of disease states. So these changes may modify the magnitude of a tissue physiologic response to catecholamines and can be important clinically during the course of treatment. One of the best studied examples of receptor regulation is the desensitization of adrenoceptors that may occur after exposure to catecholamines and other sympathomimetic drugs. So there are two major categories of desensi desensitization. 
responses mediated by G protein coupled receptors. First is the homologous descent. Citation and second the heterologous he heterologous descent citation. So homologous refers to loss of responsiveness exclusively of the receptors that have been exposed to repeated or sustained activation by an agonist. For heterologous descent citation, so it refers to the process by which the sensitization the sensi sensitization of one receptor by its agonist also results in the desensitization of another receptor that has not been directly activated by the agonist in question. So a major mechanism that occurs rapidly involves phosphorylation of receptors by members of the G protein coupled receptor kinase family. So specific adrenoceptors became substrates of these kinases only when they are bound to an agonist. So adrenoceptor polymorphisms, polymorphisms, since elucidation of the sequences of the genes encoding alpha-1, alpha-2, and beta subtypes of adrenoceptors, it has become clear that there are relatively common genetic poly polymorphisms for many of these receptor subtypes in humans. Some of these may lead to changes in critical amino acid sequences that have pharmacologic importance. Often, distinct polyformism, polymorphisms occur in specific combinations termed haplotypes. So for the norepinephrine transporter, when norepinephrine is released into the synaptic cleft, it binds to postsynaptic adrenoceptors to elicit the expected physiologic effect. However, just as release of neurotransmitters is a tightly regulated process, the mechanisms for removal of neurotransmitter must also be highly effective. So the NET or norepinephrine transporter is the principal route by which this occurs. It is particularly efficient in the synapses of the heart where up to 90% of released norepinephrine is removed by NET. So for the medical chemistry of sympathomimetic drugs, so first this is the substitution of benzene ring. A maximum of alpha and beta activity is found with catecholamines. So the next is a substitution of amino group. The increasing of the size of al alkyl substituents of the amino group tends to increase better receptor activity. So increasing the size tends to increase the better receptor activity. Uh, next is the substitution on alpha car carbon. So the substitution at the alpha carbon block oxidation by MAO and prolonged the action of drugs, particularly the non-catecholamines. The, ne the, the next is the substitution of beta carbon. So direct acting agonists, typically beta hydroxyl group, although dopamine does not. So for uh, the adverse effects, um, there is CNS disturbances like anxiety, fear, tension, headache, and tremor. They, there can also be hemorrhage, which is a marked elevation of blood pressure in the cerebral cortex. There is also car cardiac arrhythmias and pulmonary edema. So for the contraindications, hyperthyroidism, epinephrine, enhanced cardiovascular actions in hyperthyroidism. So the dose must be reduced, if ever. So there is increased production or upregulation of our receptors on the vasculature and B recept better receptors in heart of the hyperthyroid individual, leading hypertensive response. There, uh, there is also diabetes, which epinephrine releases, increases the release of endogenous stores in glucose. So. Um, in diabetic patients, dosages of insulin may have to be increased. So for the indirect acting sympathomimetics, first, they may enter the sympathetic nerve ending and displace stored catecholamine transmitter. Such drugs have been called amphetamine-like or displacers. Second, they may inhibit reuptake of released transmitter by interfering 
the action of NE transporter or net. For the mixed acting sympathomimetics, ephedrine, the plant ephedra vulgaris, has been used in traditional Chinese medicine for 2,000 years for the treatment of asthma and hay fever. So, ephedrine is a non cathecol it has a bioavailability and a relatively long duration. It releases NE and activates beta-2 receptors directly. So, pseudo pseudoephedrine. So, one of four ephedrine enasomers and available at over-the-counter as a component of many decongestant mixtures. For mefeten, mefenteramine, it is used restricted to maintain blood pressure in hypotensive states, adverse effects, hallucinations, and convulsions. So for phenylpropanolamine, it is a common component in over-the-counter appetite suppressants. It was removed from the market because it was its use was associated with hemorrhagic strokes in young women. So uh, the mechanical of this potential adverse effect is unknown. So for the therapeutic uses, uh, it can be used as in cardiovascular applications, treatment of acute hypotension. So this treatment is usually of short duration while appropriate intravenous fluid or blood is being administered. So it can also uh, uh, you be used for cardiogenic shock and acute heart failure, usually due to myocardial infraction. So in low to moderate doses, these drugs may increase cardiac output and cause relatively little peripheral vasoconstriction. So it can also be used in chronic orthostatic hypotension to which medications can interfere with autonomic function, diabetes, and other diseases causing peripheral autonomic neuropathies. So again, in cardiac applications, so isoproterenol and epinephrine have been used in temporary emergency management of complete heart block and cardiac arrest. So, the butamine injection is used as pharmacologic cardiac stress. For the pulmonary applications, one of the most important uses of sympathomimetic drugs is the therapy of bronchial asthma. So, for beta-2 selective agents, albuterol, sabutamol, bambuterol, metaproteranol, and tertabiline. Also, they can also be used for anaphylaxis, in which... Epinephrine is effective because beta-1 increases cardiac input, beta-2 relaxes constricted bronchioles, and alpha-1 constricts capillaries. So for ophthalmic applications, phenylephrine is an effective mydriatic agent used to facilitate examination of the retina. Glaucoma responds to a variety of sympathomimetic and sympathologic drugs. Epinephrine is now rarely used, but beta-blocking agents are among the most important therapies. Apraclonidine and brimonidine, um, alpha-2 selective agonist that also lower intraocular pressure is used in glaucoma. So for the genitourinary applications, beta-2 selective agents relax the pregnant uterus. So aura sympa sympathomimetic therapy is occasionally useful in the treatment of stress incontinence. Ephedrine or pseudoephedrine may be tried. Sympathomimetic class of drugs is very important class of drugs because it's used, it is used in so many important conditions like cardiogenic shock, anaphylactic shock, hypotension, hypertension, congestive heart failure, bronchial asthma, nasal decongestion, narcolepsy, and attention deficit or hyperactivity disorder. That will be all. Thank you.